Assalamu alaikum everyone this is your instructor engineer Mirbad and uh, as I told you in the previous lab today we will be covering Ajax so um, it, it will be basically a combination of uh, Ajax and JSON because they are um, linked together so in the last lab we did uh, uh, we, we covered JSON and after that we we talked about uh, RESTful APIs a little bit so in today's lab we have to implement Ajax in uh, JavaScript and um, we will also use JSON then uh, we will implement a case example on it and uh, then a lab assessment for you guys so first of all what is Ajax so as I told you it's linked with the previous lab so basically Ajax may, means AJAX that is asynchronous JavaScript and XML now you will be wondering about that uh, I told you that we will be using JSON as a uh, communication language but here we are talking about XML because Ajax X is for XML so XML when when Ajax was first used so at that time only XML was used for uh, the uh, that data transfers so it, it was a data format but now we have shifted to JSON so we'll be using uh, JSON with Ajax anyways Let's, uh, I have uh, three, four pictures of Ajax that uh, covers the properties of Ajax. So, what is the most important property of Ajax? It is that it does not requ require refreshing of page to get data. So, like, if I am on, let's say this is, an, uh, this is a website and this is an HTML page and I want to change this whole data or, or let's say I want to change this image. So, what would I do? I uh, if I do not use Ajax to, so I have to refresh the page and uh, th th this image will be changed afterwards but the beauty of Ajax is that I'll uh, I can change this image uh, like how uh, uh, 10 times 20 times 100 times just by clicking somewhere or doing some action so this will be this image will be changed uh, without the refresh so no, no refresh is uh, allowed uh, no, no refresh is um, used here then um, Ajax can request external data from a server definitely it can receive external data from a server so and it can send data to a server so it can request receive and send data to and from a server so basically uh, when a user goes to a website the user has to wait for the server to respond with the data this is not the case with Ajax we have the option to load the data when the user is already on the page making the user really happy so this is what I described previously okay these are some of the uh, key uh, key players I must say key players of Ajax all of these technologies are used in Ajax so first of all JavaScript you know what does JavaScript do so it is used for data manipulation and data handling then then it is DOM uh, you people uh, should have covered DOM in the theory so I won't be going in the detail of this but DOM is basically a document object model so it is a cross-platform and language independent application programming interface that treats an HTML, X, HTML or XML document as a tree structure so DOM have, has a tree structure having different branches and every uh, node uh, represents basically an object uh, of the document okay then CSS I won't go in the detail again because you know what does CSS do then uh, we will be using this HTML HTTP request in our example in this lab so uh, we in uh, for the short we use XHR for it that is XML HTTP request XHR so what is XHR it is basically an API in the form of an object whose methods transfer data between a web browser and a web server so we'll be creating something in the uh, using our JavaScript and uh, uh, XHR and that then it will uh, receive or transfer data to and from a web server that we did that we also did in the previous lab uh, that was a random user generator so we'll be uh, continuing that same example here then we should have a server side definitely for Ajax to work and then we'll be using JSON uh, okay so now you people uh, should have the understanding that 
basically ajax is not a programming language but it is a group of technologies so combination of technology within the browser that is uh, xhr objects javascript and dom etc to connect the request okay so not only for xml but uh, can also be used for json and text data okay so these were some of the properties of uh, ajax so let's begin our uh, lab so first of all i uh, i've opened uh, a folder here and let's start with the starter code okay so this is the previous class so i'll just remove it okay now i'll be using uh, i'll be starting basically with the xhr object so first of all for that let's uh, have a variable of name let, let's say let, let's call it ajax you can call it anything it's equal to new xhr xml http request xhr right so we have made a uh, xhr object here now let's uh, open it with live server let's see all right inspect All right, so there's no error. That's great. Now let's moving forward. Uh, so we have used the Ajax object. So it has different. Uh, the XHR has has uh, it have it has different uh, uh, properties or attributes. Uh, some of it is like uh, on load, on load, restart, on progress, uh, uh, ready state. This is a very important uh, uh, parameter, ready state. So th this state, when the state changes, we get to know that uh, XHR is working. Then uh, the response text, response type. It's a little bit, um, not a little bit, but it is also necessary, and status and many other uh, parameters, attributes. So. We have made an Ajax uh, object. Now, let's uh, all right. Now let's study about the ready state. So for ready state, I'll uh, I'll make a function that is Ajax <coughs> dot uh, that is ready state ready state. And we'll uh, not ready state. That is on ready state change. So whenever the ready state changes, so we'll make a function. So that function will be called and uh, here we'll write about. We'll just simply console it. Console dot log, and uh, let's say ajax dot ready state. So let's save it, and okay so you can see that it does not output anything in order to start the xhr object we have to send the data first so we have made the a, a, a new uh, xhr then we have to send the data so i'll write ajax dot send now let's save it so it will give you an error it would say that in order to execute the send first you have to open the xhr object 
So for that we have to use, before the send, we have to use an uh, open function, open, and in open we have to give it uh, two uh, parameters. Number first is uh, the request that we want. Let's say I use a get request that we have covered yesterday. And then uh, we'll use the URL that we want to get the data from. So let's use the, uh, yesterday's, uh, um, the previous lab's URL. So it was, if I remember exactly, it was random user dot me, if I'm not wrong, dot me. And then it was slash API. Okay, so this is the um, we we are you we are getting the data from random user dot me API, and then there is a um, an optional um, parameter that is we we write true. So if you don't even write it, so it won't give you any error. Anyways, so what we have done, we have. Uh, made a new XHR, then we have opened the request and then we have sent the request. So let's save it now. Okay, so now what are we printing? We are pl printing the ready state. So basically, what is the ready state? We have four ready states, or I must say five ready states 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's put one other thing over here. And um, let's say. I want to add ajax dot uh, status that we just saw there in uh, previously so status and let's save it okay so or maybe I can also add uh, for just a beautification or learning purpose I would write status changed plus right uh, all right let's save it so first of all it says uh, whenever it sends the data so the ready state changes so it would call this function and it would uh, uh, it would display state changed the uh, the ready state and the status so the fr in first it says state changed then one that is the uh, ready state and that is the uh, status of the HTTP request it, it is a return value then state change the 2 then 200 so basically what is this 200 this 200 is that we have discussed in previously it was it is the HTTP status code so 200 means that the uh, execution is successful so this is uh, 200 and what about the state changes so this is these are the state changes of uh, XHR ready state. So first of all, if it is zero, it means it is unsent, right? Then, uh, like like uh, previously, as uh, when we just wrote, uh, when we just made this uh, XHR object, we didn't do anything else. So the ready state was zero, if you remember. So at that time, there was an, uh, nothing was was sent from XHR. Then it gets to open state then it gets to headers is received then it gets to loading and then done so these are basically the state changes depending on every stage of the ready state so these are uh, the state changes and these are the uh, re return status okay all right then if i uh, let's say if i go a little bit further and i want to use uh just let, let's just uh, all right all right let's just okay now let's say i want to um, use just a function of uh, XHR. Let me just show you here first. So I would write Ajax. So okay. So now, now you can see that uh, the ready state has changed to four, 
and this is the response text that is all the data about uh, a random user so the uh, gender male and name and all the uh, all the attributes so this is that and this is the status that is 200 and so on Th this is the uh, response URL all right now let's say I want to use uh, on progress on progress so I want to see what on progress is so I would just simply write Ajax dot on progress uh, and whenever it changes so it will call function and let's say I log out I, I log something mm, I say that uh, progress and uh, Ajax dot ready state and uh, ajax dot status all right so now let's save it so see i come here so progress is basically the loading so whenever uh, we get to the stage of on progress so this function will be called and it would uh, display the ready state and the status now let's say if I just copy paste it and I do it for let's say on load I'll show it to you over here so Ajax on load let's say this one on load that is when everything is done so on load so let's save it so see the last one is on load that is the done so this is how can we can use the uh, every uh, property uh, separately. All right, now <clears throat> okay. Now what I want to do is the task we did in the previous lab was we uh, what we did was. Uh, we used this uh, URL that is randomuser.me.api and we displayed a user with his name and picture over here. Now what we will do is we will change the user and his name just on a click of a button so we, we, we will get to know the functionality of Ajax without refreshing the page when we just click the button so the user will get changed. For that, let's first create a button. So I would write under the division, I would write, I'll create a button. Uh, so, button, let's say I give it an ID of uh, load new and I right load so this is the name of the button load save it so I, we, have, we have got this button load now <clears throat> let's come to the javascript and we will give the button some functionality so as done in the last lab i would write a variable output is equal to hmm, document dot get element by id get comment by id and the element is uh, output so element is output right this is the id okay let's just go a little bit okay right now i would uh, make a button click variable button click you can name it anything and it would be document uh, dot uh, get element by ID again and it would be the load new button that we have just made here load new right and then we'll make an uh, uh, event listener so button click dot add event listener 
and an event listener we will say that if it is clicked the button is clicked so you have to call a function and what would the function do it would right. what would the function do it would load a um, it, it, it would uh, call a function that we can name load ajax let's let's say we call it load ajax you can again call it anything all right okay so now what we would do is everything we have written previously we will uh, cover it in a function that is load ajax so starting and ending it would go to the end all right <clears throat> or not here no. it should be over here okay so once uh, this button is clicked so it will uh, get the element by ID, by ID of this button and it would uh, once it is clicked it would load this a function and a new um, XHR will be made and then uh, this will be opened uh, we will get uh, data from random user not me and we will send the data alright so now we can write here that if once the state is changed so we will write if just uh, uh, remem remember the codes again so we will simply write if ajax <coughs> dot uh, read uh, ready state um, equals equals 4 so uh, it means when it is ready and if uh, ajax dot status is equal to 200 so or, or we can just write it simply like this uh, and just for programming purpose we'll simply write this and and all right so once once the uh, ready state is uh, loaded completely it is on stage four and the state is 200 that is it is okay what we what would we do we would simply uh, let's uh, let's say we make a simple but a simple object of whatever data we get so we will parse it as done previously and it would be ajax dot response text response text so let's say if I write ajax here so all I'm getting is this response text so what is there in the response text all the information about the uh, random user okay so I'll get the response text and I'll parse it to get it into a uh, format of proper JSON then I would write uh, let's say I make another variable let's call it data so let's say it is uh, JSON and if you remember where was the uh, data stored so it was stored in uh, the it was it was it was in results here yeah. so it was in results and zero so uh, we did it in the previous lab the the information about the user was stored in the results this is the results and it was basically an array if we just break it down so it was an array uh, of zero element it was just uh, an array of length one so we have to call the first element so results so now let's uh, make a message so that we can output it once we load the button uh, click the load button so let's say it is data dot name 
or just let's save it first. Okay, it has some problem at line twenty. <clears throat> is redundant. Let's save it. Let me just get back with the error solved. Okay, sorry, I just got a little bit confused. Basically, <coughs> that was all right, the previous one. So, okay. All right. I've just forgot to uh, use the parenthesis of the function. I hope it works now. All right. So there is no error. Okay. So now we have loaded the data. So I will make another variable. Let's call it a message to get the uh, the username and uh, not the username, the first name, last name, and the image of the user over here. So I would simply use uh, data dot name dot first so I guess there's some problem because it is not loading it anyways let's first check it over here so data so to save some time let me just debug it and then I'll come back okay so uh, there was no problem I just rechecked it so just write this code um, this whole code so first we uh, got the response text from the uh, from the um, request then we parse the data and we uh, save the data in the JSON it is uh, a structured data or uh, like just like the in the pattern of JSON then we got um, th this array results array from JSON and we saved it in the data. Now let's uh, let's see what we can. So j I've just used the uh, first name, so it it works. All right. Okay. So let's also use the uh, last name. So that is data dot name dot last. All right then plus let's say I want to use an image so the image was was saved in uh, so it has a source image source and the source was basically in data dot picture and in picture it was most probably most probably in thumbnail and uh, large yeah it was in large so okay let's close it let's see what we have now so now let's load it all right so first name last name and the picture of mr. ML so now let's beautify it a little bit if you want to uh, so all right now let's beautify it so for that I have to use um, let's make it h2 so I would simply use uh, h2 and then plus load all right so h2 i can also use a line break if i'm not wrong so So 
this is done so now we have implemented ajax in our previous code and what we can do we can load new users without even refreshing the page so if i refresh the page i'll i can i can change the users see you can change the users all right so this was uh, the basics of ajax now uh, let's see what we have next we just back okay so now this is just an example i've already uh, written the code so just to save time but uh, you people should I, i'll go uh, I, i'll go line by line in the code so first of all um, just as before we have a button id that is uh, we, we named it something else let's say we named it trigger and uh, the button name is get a joke so whenever we click the button so it will go to this uh, url that is api.chucknorris.io slash jokes slash random so it will reload a, a, a random joke over here so what have we done uh, same as previous uh, event listener and we, we have just uh, changed this uh, to trigger it is just another way to uh, use the, uh, the the calling function so there we use the output method here we use the query selector okay so then simple as that um, a new xhr here open send and here we we checked uh, that if the ready state is 4 and it's 200 the status is 200 so what can what we'll do we'll just <coughs> get the data from here and we will uh, parse the text we'll get it into json pattern then we will uh, display an image and the joke so let's run it so so this is a, a joke that this is the image this is the joke when chuck norris walks through dark allies muggers give chuck uh, their wallet so, so some of the jokes are really um, uh, I, I mean i i don't laugh at, at some jokes and some jokes are really bad so just uh, forget about that <laughs> all right so this is how we can implement uh, some other api all right now i'll be uh, moving towards uh, a case study and again I have already written the code uh, so I, I, I will just be explaining the code for you guys so in this uh, case study uh, you, you will also have a, an assessment so what are we doing in this example we are uh, calling two APIs here just as we used the random user and the Chuck Norris uh, Norris jokes so what we will do is we will call two APIs like uh, one is as uh, let's check number one is Wikipedia the API of Wikipedia and number two is uh, YouTube so what we will do we will make a, a search button and a search bar and whatever we write in that search so uh, this Ajax will search it in the uh, Wikipedia page and give us all the content of that uh, search and also it will give us the um, the URL from which it has received the data so it is done using an uh, API of uh, Wikipedia that is this this is the API okay and then we will also uh, display three to four videos based on that search having uh, from the YouTube API so let's first run it and let's check what it is so open with live server all right so this is just a default let's say I search for uh, anything let's say Toyota Toyota and let's click it so you can see that it has uh, got the uh, the data from the en.wikipedia this URL and this is the data we can change this data I'll, I'll tell you how and these are the th this is done from uh, the Wikipedia API and this is done from uh, the YouTube API so we have this let, let's say I click this video so it will go to other tab and it will play the video 
all right <clears throat> so what is done here that's it all right so first of all uh, same as before these are just the uh, uh, metadata the, the, this is done just for the uh, this is only done for the beautification purpose so uh, weight size and everything just forget about it at the moment now okay so the header then we have a button for search then we have an input where we have the text and its uh, name or its ID is search term. So remember this, this is the ID of this search section. We have uh, made also two other divisions having IDs uh, output of Wikipedia and output of YouTube. Then on the click we um, use the uh, previously used uh, functions so it will call on click it will call the show results this one uh, the function so in first as this is the search item so it will get the input from the search item the, the, the search term it will get the input and what it will do it will call this URL which has uh, th this URL is, ba is basically the API just like random user uh, slash API so this is the API of Wikipedia and what we have changed here is uh, that and uh, if you just copy paste it from the Google so here we will have uh, and search is equal to there there will be some default value so every time you call it it will just search that default value so for that we have added the search term that we input over here so we have added it to the search so whatever we enter here so it will search it then same as before same as before same as before now when we get the response so it will uh, just simply uh, show the response to us that is Toyota Toyota and the URL so here it is now one of your tasks would be to implement it and see what this response of X means so it will what we are doing here we, we are uh, having a for loop and in every iteration it is uh, uh, it is searching for the response whatever the, uh, the detail is in uh, is in the, the Wikipedia page and it is giving us the response back like we are using the first object only we can let's say if I make it one so let's see what it is then let's say I write Toyota again see so in the first uh, uh, it means in the second element of this response uh, uh, array we have this data over there Toyota Supra if I make it two three so it will change so you can change it uh, you, you you can change it on your own will all right then let's come up uh, let, let's come to the YouTube okay so getting this API is really easy but getting the API for uh, YouTube it is uh, it requires a little bit of work how can you do this okay this is also one of your assessment that uh, just copy paste this code but you have to make your own YouTube API and paste the API over here like after this you can paste it over here that is the key is equal to this this is your API from key is equal to this so this is a i z till if you this is your API so you have to paste it over here and then you will be able to see the results you cannot see the results most probably on my API because this is just installed in my computer so how can you get the API for uh, uh, YouTube you should just simply write uh, you should write YouTube API okay so Google, Google developer is open for all so in order to get to the Google developer you should make a uh, you, you should sign up to the YouTube first using your Gmail account so this is the uh, Google uh, developer and then then I'll go to guide 
so here you, you can get all the uh, steps that how to create an API but just for uh, simplicity I would just simply go to uh, obtain authorization credentials sorry Google developers console All right. Now let it load. Let it load. Let it load. Okay. So this is the web engineering. This is uh, the project that I've just made. You can also. So what will you will you do? You will create the new project, and you will uh, name it something. Let's say uh, test project. Right. Okay. So my new project is made. Okay. Now let's go to that project. So to, in order to get the API, you have to make a new project and get the key. Now I am in, let's go to the test project. Okay, so I'm now in the test project. Now what will I do? I will simply go to the dashboard again and I'll go to the library. Once I go to the library, I'll just come down and I'll click on YouTube data api version 3 okay so once i click this enable i'll get the uh, okay after some options this university's internet is quite slow uh, okay so click create credentials and click here uh, do API choose JavaScript and make it public now once you uh, click this uh, what credentials do I need you'll get the API just copy it and you will get this sort of a code uh, where it is this sort of code so just uh, change this and paste your own API then you will be able to see the results so I'll just upload this uh, file and you can change it okay so and then we'll just simply um, show the thumbnails and the video ID and the title all of these are again in the uh, data items as here it was in the response so here it is in the data items so using that we can uh, create some uh, this sort of a page now uh, the assessment would be to call uh, uh, to uh, change the Google uh, the YouTube API to your own API and then one other assessment would be to use Twitter API and do whatever you want with that in this page so that would be your uh, assessment so that was all about Ajax uh, basically uh, sort of uh, and uh, basics of Ajax so I hope uh, uh, you people would have learned something. If there is any problem in this lab and in the previous lab, just please let me know. I'll, I'll upload one uh, assessment and it will cover both the labs. So it would be marked 20 points. So thank you so much and take care. Allah Hafiz.